It's time to turn our attention to another coordinate system. This one's called the polar coordinate system in two dimensions, or in three dimensions, the cylindrical coordinate system. This, these are common terms used in mathematics and in physics. Uh, on other engineering books, we use the radial and transverse coordinate system. The idea is very similar to the whole concept of the normal tangential system in that we just have an object moving along a curved path. But in this case, we'll have an x and a y axis. And they're still going to be fixed in space. But then, instead of using an x and a y coordinate for some arbitrary point out in space, what we're going to do is we're going to determine that this particle has a position. And that position is defined by the magnitude of the distance from the origin. And we'll often refer to that as r vector. But there's also going to be, besides the magnitude of the position, there's going to be an angle. And this angle is always measured properly, if you will, with respect to the positive x-axis. So there's some position r. Now, the vector position r is equal to the magnitude of the vector, but then I need a unit vector. So we're going to use two new unit vectors in this case. We're going to have one unit vector, which we'll call E sub r hat. And that unit vector always points away from the origin, so along the unit vector r. And then there's another unit vector, which is at 90 degrees to the first. And it's called E sub theta hat. This is often referred to as the transverse coordinate. E sub r is the radial coordinate. E sub theta is the transverse coordinate. And so my vector r is very simply r, the length of the vector, times E sub r hat. The angle theta is actually built into the E sub r hat because it points exactly away from the origin. So let's assume for a minute that we had a different r vector, maybe someplace out here. You can see that e sub r in this case does not point in the same direction as the first e sub r. That is to say, e sub r hat, although it's a unit vector, same length, has a new direction. So it is e sub a theta. Now, unlike the normal tangential coordinate system, the radial transverse coordinate system is a right-handed coordinate system, meaning I will always go counterclockwise from E radial hat to E transverse hat, always counterclockwise. All right, so here is the position, R, the distance, times E sub R hat. So how about the velocity? How am I going to find out what the velocity is? Well, keep in mind, velocity, by definition, is the derivative of r vector with respect to time. So that's the derivative with respect to time of r e sub r hat. But e sub r hat, notice when I went from position 1 to position 2, E sub r hat changed, not in length, but in direction. Very much like we had happening with the normal tangential system. And so, in this derivative, we have to use the product rule. So this is going to be equal to the derivative of r with respect to time, times E sub r hat, plus r times the derivative of E sub r hat, with respect to time. So r hat is a measure of how the length or the distance from the origin is changing with respect to time. So my velocity might be written as r dot e sub r hat plus r now, the derivative of e sub r hat is going to be very much the same as the derivative of e sub n hat. Excuse me, e sub t hat, e tangential. That is to say, the derivative 
of Isabar hat is going to be omega times e sub theta hat or theta dot if you prefer times e sub theta hat that's a measure of how the angle with respect to the positive x-axis is changing with respect to time so this would be r omega e sub theta hat something that's worth noting here are dimensions r dot is the derivative of the length with respect to time, so that's length over time. E sub r, of course, has no dimension. r is length. Omega is the derivative of theta with respect to time, so that's 1 over time. And, of course, E sub theta also has no dimension. So you'll notice this term is length over time, and this term is also length over time. It's very important that we see that the dimensions match from one term to the other. All right. Now, what's r hat or r dot rather? It's a measure of how quickly we're moving away from the origin. And as I move in this path, not only am I changing my distance away from the origin, but I'm changing my angle. And theta dot or omega is a measure of that. So you can see that in this particular quick case. My angle has gone in that direction. There's my delta theta. So the derivative of theta with respect to time, and I'm assuming this is position 1 and this is position 2, my derivative of theta with respect to time is counterclockwise. That would be negative. But then how quickly am I moving along that? That's going to be r omega. In the case of circular motion, if this is a circle, r dot is zero. In other words, the radius or distance from the center of the circle never changes. r omega, then, is going to be a measure of how quickly this point moves around that circle. Measured in length per unit time, meters per second, feet per second, whatever the case might be. So you can imagine if this was a merry-go-round and you were on this horse, r omega would be a measure of your speed on that horse your linear speed on that horse. If you were on a horse out here, your omega is the same as the inside horse, but you're going to be moving faster because you have a larger radius. All right, so you can imagine that if your first friend is on this horse and your second friend is on this horse, and you're trying to travel from one horse to another, you're going to have not only an r omega as you're standing on this moving merry-go-round, but your r dot is also changing. So think of that r dot as moving from friend 1 to friend 2 while you're on a merry-go-round. The r omega is also going to be part of what your speed with respect to some fixed origin might be. <clears throat>